Anyone who's seen Dirty Dancing knows that Baby and her dance instructor Johnny, played by actors Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, have incredible on-screen chemistry and created one of cinema's greatest ever romantic duos. But behind the scenes, things weren't so smooth sailing. In the years following the film's release, both actors dish it on their behind the scenes tension. Keep watching as we delve into the full story of what went down between the late Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey on the set of the 1987 film Dirty Dancing. But before we do that, let's take a look at some interesting facts about Dirty Dancing. Are you ready? Let's get started. First choice. Surprisingly, Patrick Swayze, iconic for his role as Johnny in the beloved film Dirty Dancing, was not the initial choice for the character. The role was initially extended to Val Kilmer, a talented actor fresh off his success in Top Gun, alongside Tom Cruise. However, Kilmer, perhaps concerned about being typecast as a heartthrob, ultimately turned down the opportunity. Ironically, Kilmer chose a different path and accepted the lead role in the fantasy film Willow. Unfortunately, this decision did not pan out as expected, as Willow faced commercial disappointment and failed to achieve the acclaim Kilmer had hoped for. Regrettably, to this day, he reflects on the choice to decline the role of Johnny in Dirty Dancing, recognizing the missed opportunity to be a part of a cinematic phenomenon and cement his legacy in a different light. Patrick Swayze ultimately stepped into the role and left an indelible mark on the hearts of fans worldwide, dancing his way into the annals of film history. Freezing Conditions The unforgettable lake scene in Dirty Dancing, where Johnny attempts to teach Baby to dance in the water, is etched into the memories of fans worldwide. This pivotal moment, however, came with its own set of challenges during filming. The scene was shot at a lake in North Carolina in the brisk month of October, and the water temperature was nothing short of bone-chilling. The freezing conditions not only added authenticity to the character's struggle, but also brought about unintended physical consequences for the actors. As Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey immersed themselves in the icy waters, the cold began to take its toll. In the midst of the passionate dance lesson, the frigid temperature turned their lips an unmistakable shade of blue. That's why there were no close-ups during that scene. A five-minute audition. Delving into the casting dynamics of Dirty Dancing, it's fascinating to uncover the intriguing story behind Jennifer Grey's audition for the role of Baby. Patrick Swayze, who was already on board to play Johnny, fervently advocated for Grey to secure the coveted role. However, the casting decision wasn't without skepticism from the rest of the production team. The initial hesitation stemmed from the fact that Jennifer Grey was 10 years older than the character she was being considered for. The role of Baby was envisioned as a young, innocent teenager, and Grey, in reality, was a decade beyond that stage. This incongruity raised concerns among the decision-makers, questioning whether she could authentically embody the youthful and naive essence of Baby. In a pivotal turn of events, Jennifer Grey's audition proved to be nothing short of a revelation. It took a mere five minutes for her to dispel any doubts and convince everyone that she was, indeed, the perfect fit for the part. Box Office Cash the financial journey of Dirty Dancing mirrors the film's success on the silver screen. With a production cost of $5 million, the movie embarked on a remarkable cinematic odyssey that would leave an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Upon its worldwide theatrical release, Dirty Dancing transcended expectations, becoming a box office sensation. The film's magnetic blend of romance, dance, and undeniable chemistry between Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey captured the hearts of audiences across the globe. The numbers spoke volumes as the movie raked in a staggering $214 million in box office revenue. This financial triumph wasn't just a testament to the film's popularity. It marked an extraordinary achievement in the world of cinema at the time. Virginia in the Fall 
While the storyline unfolds with Baby and her family embarking on a summer adventure to a Catskills resort, the reality behind the scenes paints a different picture. Surprisingly, most of the film was shot not in the heat of summer, but in the crisp embrace of fall in Virginia. This choice also presented a logistical challenge for the cast and crew. Despite the fall foliage setting, the storyline demanded a summer ambiance, requiring the actors to sport summer attire. The result? The cast found themselves notably underdressed for the autumn weather, creating a somewhat amusing yet challenging dynamic on set. One particular scene, the lake sequence, required Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey to wade into the water, amplifying the weather-induced discomfort. The leaves were changing already because it was fall. To maintain the illusion of a balmy summer day, the crew had to spray paint them green to make it look like summertime. Jennifer's dancing jeans. Jennifer Grey's prowess on the dance floor in Dirty Dancing is a testament to her innate talent, but the roots of her exceptional skills delve into her family's artistic legacy. The dance gene, it seems, runs deep in her veins, drawing inspiration from her father, Joel Gray. Joel Gray, a luminary in the entertainment industry, wasn't just a performer. He was hailed as one of the best cabaret performers globally. His command over the stage and ability to enrapture audiences with his dance performances established him as a force to be reckoned with in the world of cabaret. It's within the embrace of this illustrious family history that Jennifer Gray's own dancing journey takes shape. The influence of Joel Gray's dance legacy on Jennifer's formative years likely played a pivotal role in shaping her skills. Growing up surrounded by the artistry and passion that her father exuded on stage, Jennifer absorbed the essence of performance and developed an affinity for dance that would later shine through in her iconic role as Baby in Dirty Dancing. Mrs. Schumacher In the intricate web of Dirty Dancing's plot, the character of Mrs. Schumacher, the elusive thief responsible for pilfering wallets at various resorts, Surprisingly, the initial choice for this role was not an actress, but the renowned sex therapist, Dr. Ruth Westheimer. However, Dr. Ruth, known for her candid discussions on intimacy, declined the role, expressing concerns about potential repercussions on her professional reputation. The role eventually found its way to Paula Truman, a musical performer with a different artistic background. A musical. The resounding success of Dirty Dancing on the silver screen set the stage for a spectacular encore as the beloved story transitioned seamlessly into the world of musical theater. The musical adaptation of Dirty Dancing graced stages in Chicago, Toronto, and various European cities, captivating theatergoers with live renditions of the iconic dance sequences and timeless romance. Amidst the cheers and applause, the dream of seeing Dirty Dancing grace the illustrious stages of Broadway has become a fervent hope for fans of Baby and Johnny, TV series. Capitalizing on the phenomenal success of Dirty Dancing, producers sought to extend the magic to the small screen with a television adaptation. In 1988, the iconic tale made its television debut as a series starring Paul Feig and Melora Hardin in lead roles. However, the TV adaptation faced a challenging fate, lasting only 11 episodes. This brevity may explain why the series might not be as familiar to audiences compared to its cinematic predecessor. Despite its relatively short run, the TV show marked a significant chapter in the careers of its cast members. For Melora Hardin, the venture into Dirty Dancing served as a stepping stone to future successes, including her memorable role as Jan on The Office, a great career move. Bill Medley's journey with Dirty Dancing nearly took a different turn when he faced the decision to contribute a song to the film's soundtrack. Initially hesitant, he contemplated declining the opportunity, a choice that could have altered the course of his musical career. However, Destiny had other plans, and Bill Medley ultimately embraced the offer, unaware of the immense impact it would have on his artistic trajectory. The song recorded for Dirty Dancing turned out to be more than just a soundtrack inclusion. 
it became a defining moment in Bill Medley's career. The success of the song not only resonated with the film's audience, but also elevated Medley's standing in the music industry. In a twist of fate, Patrick Swayze emerged as a recurring figure in Bill Medley's professional journey. The chemistry between the two artists became a source of inspiration, with Medley considering Swayze his lucky charm. This belief in their collaborative magic led Medley to compose a song for another of Patrick Swayze's iconic movies, Ghost, Ryan Gosling. The iconic lift from Dirty Dancing has transcended its origins and found a place in the dance lexicon of Hollywood, making cameo appearances in various films. Notably, Ryan Gosling showcased his prowess in the lift in the film Crazy Stupid Love, where he performed the movie with Emma Stone. The scene in Crazy Stupid Love not only pays homage to the unforgettable moment in Dirty Dancing, but also adds a contemporary twist to the classic dance move, as Ryan Gosling effortlessly executes the lift with Emma Stone. Interestingly, Jennifer Grey, the original leading lady of the iconic lift, had the opportunity to witness this cinematic homage firsthand. A massive fan of Ryan Gosling, she attended a screening of Crazy Stupid Love with her husband. The thrill of seeing the renowned actor perform the famous lift was heightened when, in an unexpected turn, Gosling mentioned Jennifer Grey by name within the film. Dirty Dancing Weekends, the enchanting town of Pembroke, Virginia where the magic of dirty dancing unfolded on the big screen, has turned its connection to the iconic film into a delightful annual tradition. Three weekends each year, Pembroke hosts dirty dancing-themed events, offering visitors a unique opportunity to immerse themselves in the nostalgic world of the beloved movie. During these dirty dancing weekends, the town comes alive with the spirit of the film, Participants can relive the romance, dance to the timeless soundtrack, and experience the charm of Pembroke as seen in the classic scenes of the movie. The streets, once graced by the presence of Johnny and Baby, become a backdrop for fans to step back in time. One of the highlights of these themed weekends is the chance for visitors to try out the famous lift, immortalized by Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey in the film's climactic dance sequence. No to a sequel. The prospect of a sequel to the beloved Dirty Dancing stirred excitement among fans, but it faced a roadblock when Patrick Swayze, the charismatic lead, firmly rejected the idea. Despite the allure of a sequel and the potential financial gains, Swayze staunchly expressed his aversion to movie sequels, a sentiment that led him to decline a staggering offer of $6 million to participate in Dirty Dancing 2. Swayze's resistance to a sequel wasn't merely a financial decision. It was rooted in a principled stance against the concept of movie sequels in general. His conviction that the magic and charm of the original film couldn't be easily replicated played a pivotal role in his decision. Jennifer Grey hated Patrick Swayze's pranks. Before the iconic pairing in Dirty Dancing, Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze shared the screen in the film Red Dawn. The intense nature of the film required the entire cast, including Grey and Swayze, to undergo a demanding eight-week military training course to authentically embody their characters. During this period, Swayze's commitment to his role as a fearless leader became apparent as he reportedly immersed himself in the character, maintaining the role's intensity throughout the entire training without breaking character. This intense experience led to a strained relationship between Gray and Swayze. According to reports, Swayze's authoritative approach, ordering everyone around during the military training, created tension and Gray found it challenging to tolerate. The dynamics on the set of Red Dawn hinted at a relationship that was far from harmonious. Recalling those days, Gray candidly revealed her aversion to Swayze's pranks during the filming of Red Dawn. In an interview on The View, she expressed her feelings, saying, Patrick was playing pranks on me and everybody. It was just macho and I just couldn't take it. It was like, please, this guy, that's enough with him. 
Little did she know that their paths would cross again in a way that would redefine their professional relationship. When Gray discovered that Swayze was set to co-star with her in Dirty Dancing, her initial reaction was one of resistance. The memories of the pranks and the discomfort from their previous collaboration lingered, and she was not enthusiastic about working with him again. However, fate had other plans. The turning point came during their first screen test for Dirty Dancing. In a surprising and heartfelt gesture, Swayze took Gray aside and apologized sincerely, confessing his love for her. Gray recounted the moment, saying, He pulled me down the hall and said to me, I love you, I love you, and I'm so sorry, I know you don't want me to do the movie. This heartfelt expression of remorse and affection marked a significant shift in their dynamic, laying the foundation for the remarkable on-screen chemistry that would captivate audiences in Dirty Dancing. Gray shared a heartwarming anecdote about the actor who convinced her to join the film, revealing that during a crucial scene, he managed to evoke genuine emotions from both of them. He got tears in his eyes and I got tears in my eyes, not for the same reason she recounted. Initially skeptical, Gray thought, oh, this guy's working me. However, he quickly assured her, saying, we could kill it if we did this. Intrigued by his passion and commitment, she ultimately agreed to take on the project with him. As they delved into the film, Gray described a pivotal moment when the actor took her in his arms. Reflecting on that instant, she admitted, oh boy, I'm done. It was a transformative experience for her, as she realized that there was no competition, just a profound connection with the actor. In her own words, he became the easy chair she had been dreaming of her entire life. During a practice dance scene, where Swayze lifted Gray above his head, the undeniable chemistry between them unfolded. Swayze vividly captured the moment in his book, recalling, I lifted her, she posed beautifully, and I lowered her slowly to the ground, with our eyes locked on each other. It was a lovely moment and very sexy. The room was absolutely silent. Everyone was just staring at us. Was Jennifer Gray friends with Patrick Swayze? While the on-screen chemistry between Gray and Swayze in Dirty Dancing became the stuff of cinematic legend, behind the scenes, their relationship was marked by a certain level of tension. Despite the success of the film, they never quite reached the point of being close friends during its production. The director, reminiscing about the filming process, revealed that a subtle tension lingered, exacerbated by the fact that Swayze was a trained dancer while Gray was not. The director recalled moments when Swayze's frustration surfaced as Gray grappled with the choreography. In his memoir, he wrote about Gray slipping into silly moods, necessitating scenes to be redone repeatedly. One memorable scene that showcased the real-life dynamics between Gray and Swayze was the sensual arm-running moment. In what would become an iconic part of the film, Gray's genuine burst of laughter during the scene was the result of over 20 takes. Swayze, growing increasingly irritated with Gray's fits of laughter, found himself at odds with the situation. However, rather than reshooting the scene once again, the director made the unconventional decision to keep the genuine, laughter-filled take in the final cut of the film. Off-camera, the pair reportedly engaged in constant arguments before filming each scene. Frustrated with the ongoing tension, the producer and director attempted to mend their relationship by having Gray and Swayze revisit the video of their initial screen test. The hope was that revisiting the chemistry that had initially convinced them both to take on the project would rekindle a sense of camaraderie. Jennifer Grey regrets her tension with Patrick Swayze. In her autobiography, Jennifer Grey delves even deeper into the intricate dynamics that defined her working relationship with Patrick Swayze during the making of Dirty Dancing in 1987. Grey candidly admitted that they were for said to get along for the film, drawing a parallel between their on-screen characters, Baby and Johnny, who were not initially a natural match. Gray explained, and the fact that we needed to be a natural match created a tension, because normally when someone's not a natural, you, both people move on, 
but we were forced to be together. And our being forced to be together created a kind of synergy, or like a friction. The actress expressed regret over her previous judgments, and revealed that if Swayze were still alive today, she would extend an apology. In her own words, Gray wrote, I'm so sorry that I couldn't just appreciate and luxuriate in who you were instead of me wishing you were more like what I wanted you to be. This insight into Gray's perspective adds a layer of introspection, revealing the complexities and challenges they navigated during the film's production. Despite the tension, Gray acknowledged Swayze's invaluable role in helping her through the film's demanding dance scenes. She praised his strength, protectiveness, and genuine commitment to the project, highlighting that his heart was truly invested in the film. Gray's affectionate remarks about Swayze's pleasant scent and nice skin also provide a personal touch, giving readers a glimpse into the sensory experiences of their collaboration. The reciprocal admiration between the two actors becomes apparent as Gray shares Swayze's praise for her talents. He described her as one of the most gifted actresses around in terms of her ability to be present in the moment, right now. This mutual respect, despite their differences, sheds light on the professional admiration that characterized their working relationship. Gray also addressed the curious aspect of their off-screen relationship, emphasizing that Swayze wasn't her type and expressing her bewilderment at her own feelings. Despite the lack of romantic interest and the fact that Swayze was happily married, Gray found herself occupied with her own life, particularly her relationship with Matthew Broderick. Well, they do say that love and hate are pretty close together, so maybe that's why the chemistry works so well on screen. Before saying goodbye, why don't you jump down to the comments section and tell us, do you like Dirty Dancing and do you prefer the original or the recent remake? And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to support us. Thanks for watching. See you next time.